Yo, what's up guys? You got Pokemon here. Today we are back with the tier shifts. It's been three months, but we finally have some tier changes in Pokemon Sword and Shield. And uh, we'll be going through all of them. So this is the type of video that there's not too much visual stimuli, I guess. Uh, so feel free to do whatever you want. Eat your lunch, or just go on a walk, or jog, or do nothing and sit on <laughs> your computer. Who cares? But it's up to you. Uh, I am not alone today. I have a good friend of mine, my buddy Expulsal. You can say hi. What's up, guys? Excited to go over this Poke game. Should be fun. Yeah, I've had him on the uh, channel before uh, in a long NU video as well. And uh, just a little backstory Expulsal has helped me during the Smogon Snake Draft, where I killed it in NU. And uh, him, Rabia, and uh, wow, why am I forgetting the, the way to abbreviate his name? Oh my gosh. PDT. Yeah, yeah, PDT. Yo, I was going to say pink, and I was like, that's not it. <laughs> uh, it took, it's been a minute since I talked to him, so uh, they're part of the reason. He also recently did really well in the Smogon Grand Slam, which if you guys did not know, that is uh, one of my favorite tournaments on Smogon, and uh, basically you play all the lower tiers and try and qualify for uh, the playoffs. Uh, so I believe he made it to semifinals, correct? Yeah, yeah. So that's no <laughs> small feat. You got to play all the tiers, so... That's a really nice one. And um, yeah, good guy overall, and I'm excited to get into this video. So without further ado, if you guys like this sort of thing, let me know. Leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on the tier changes yourself, what you expect to see. Obviously, I play all the tiers, but I don't play them you know, as much as I could. So uh, certain things I'm going to miss, Expulsal might miss, so let us know. And also subscribe if you're new to the channel. So. Let's look at these tier changes for July. The first one we have, I'll talk about the first three and then I'll, I'll really let you take over Yu Yu, okay? Um, just but, but you can feel free to chime in for anything. The first one we have is from Yu Yu BL. We have a BL Knight to OU is Weavile. Weavile is, uh, it's awesome to see it back in OU. Originally it fell down because a lack of pursuit, uh, I would say. Um, so, you know, it's, even though go, OU is ghost tier, you know, ghost the tier. But lack of pursuit did that, but it started to rise up again a lot, and uh, people are really making use of choice Ben as well as heavy duty boots. Heavy duty boots is probably like the biggest saving grace for Weavile because it allows you to just come in multiple times on Stealth Rock, and the standard set would be Swords Dance, uh, Icicle Crash, or Triple Axle. A uh, knockoff is always a given, and then Ice Shard. You can also see a Low Kick on the set as well. I've also seen Aerial Ace 2 as a means to deal with Buzzwool, as well as their Shifu in tournament. Overall, Weavile it has a huge presence in the tier, and it's very threatening, uh, especially for those bulkier teams that rely on you know hazards and chip damage from Rocky Helmet to wear down fast offensive threats. And then when Weavile knocks them off, or a partner knocks them off, it makes it that much harder. Like I've seen Weavile beat Corviknights and Toxapex 1v1. Pressure is another cool ability too because you can actually see like when pressure activates and your opponent has a top of Lele or whatever, if your pressure goes first, you know that they're not Choice Scarf. So if you're banded, you can knock them out with knockoff. Uh, another set that I've been using as well recently is the Life Orb uh, Swords Dance set and it's adamant and Triple Axle can KO Max Defense Corviknight at plus two. So it's ridiculous and it, it does like up to 90% to our Shifu. So it's just such a strong presence in the tier, and I'm happy it's back, especially in a tier where, you know, Garchomp, Landorus, Dragapult are everywhere. So, such a great presence. Now, you want to talk about what you, you just lost? Some of the, the big... Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, Scizor and Mew are like two of the, the very best Pokemon in Underused. I think if you don't put them as the top two, maybe you have like Caldeo or Primarina, but those are clearly the top four, and now you can't use yeah. half of them. Like, Scizor's... This number one. The thing is, they're on like basically every team and every play style. So you can use Scizor on like your hyper offense with Life Orb. You can use it on even like Stall with your bulky Roost sets or like U-Turn, Defog, Knock Off, all that utility if it's on every team. Same with Mew, you can you usually see it like setting up spikes for bulky offense, but it could also do like nasty plot sets on hyper offense or like the, the nasty taunt set. Oh my God. Like taunt the wisp the block recovery. set too oh my gosh the block yeah, yeah. Set. yeah these mons are like like any single team you build no matter what it looks like you can probably fit these guys on and so now without them that opens up a ton like all the other all the other steals like Aga slash is pretty common but the rest of the steals i feel like aren't that common so it gets harder to fit one uh a lot of stuff probably benefits from that 
Scissor is super weird for hyper offense because it's like a really good priority user against HO, but also like a really threatening sweeper on those teams. So mm. I don't know if they'll get like better or worse. But basically, yeah, these two mons leave and like everything changes because the meta is totally centered around like you need to fit reliable scissor checks that don't get worn down. Yeah. That's like one of the most important things to think about when you're building. And so now there's a lot more freedom and I'm curious to see how it looks. I definitely think it opens up uh, Salamence for one because I know like defensive Salamence was a staple on some teams. Uh, like especially if you ran like defensive Salamence plus Amoongus at points. Obviously this is a little bit going back. I mean Salamence is still number three and I still think defensive have a lot of merit in the tier. But I know like Defog, Roost, uh, Flamethrower, Hurricane was something that was ran. Uh, yeah. for a bit too um, also the uh, the fact that like it's interesting because this Pokemon also used to run like safety goggles occasionally for Amoongus at, at certain points during UU as well uh, and, and just to see it rise up to OU and the reason it rose up to OU is because uh, especially defensive Scizor with heavy duty boots can check the almighty Kiram. Uh, it's also uh, decent as a Kartana check, uh, a Weavile check and I, I say check for all these because Specs Kiram can 2 a KO with Focus Blast while his Bullet Punch doesn't KO it back. Um, Bullet Punch actually does not KO Weavile always, which is crazy. And Knock Off, especially because they run Special Defensive, Knock Off can be very threatening. Uh, Kartana can obviously Sword Zance or Bandit uh, Breakthrough as well. But it's a nice little check to Lele as well and things like that. So it just it provides a pivot. It's the same thing that Scissor's always done. It comes in, it U-turns out, it roosts, it defogs if it needs to. Uh, but... It provides special support, so it's cool to see it come back to OU, uh, especially after, you know, dropping between, to being like, you know, a top two, top one Mon in, in UU for uh, multiple generations now, and uh, even with Pursuit being gone, which is funny. It's really, I think it's really funny that Latias, and, you know, Latias and Scizor were probably the best UU Pokemon, right, last generation, and in this generation, Latias got banned because it has too many moves and there's no Pursuit. Uh, but yeah. yeah, but also uh, now Scizor finds his way back in the OU tier too. So Latias is BL, Scizor OU, so none of them are UU. So UU is definitely going to shake up for the first time. Whereas Mew, uh, very similar to what you see in UU, uh, the taunt, uh, that taunt Willow is set, Nightshade or Seism Toss. Uh, we see Block and Prism a lot as well. I think we're going to see a lot more Mew as well during this next four weeks uh, just because of OLT. So remember, guys, tier changes take three months now for something to come into effect. So for something to rise. Uh, so you'll definitely see a lot of Scizor. I think Scizor will stay. I think Weavile will stay. Uh, Mew will more likely end up staying as well for a bit. Because we'll set so much usage in this next uh, four weeks as people are trying to counter team OLT or they're using Spike's offense as well with like Misty Explosion or Explosion Mew or Flare Blitz or whatever it is. Uh, I like that the bro... I like that bro is slowly but surely making its way back to OU. Uh, speaking of which, if tier shifts were only one month, Slow Bro would be OU this month as well. Just based <laughs> on just based on OLT. But uh, it's cool to see that it's moved up to you. Can you explain why? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's called Mindset. It's just one of the, it's definitely one of the stronger win cons in the tier because mm -hmm. it, it, it does best with like Sludge Bomb plus Scald is the two move combo I like the most. Like very little that's common in UU walls that. People don't really use Gastrodon or Seismitoad very much and mm -hmm. they struggle with other things. I've used Seismitoad like five times and every time it just totally sucks. Yes. Um, so I get that. They can be unpredictable too. Like you can also run Calm Mind with different coverage. Like um, I've seen, I think Psyshock and Flamethrower on it. Or it can like sort of mix up which moves it runs on Calm Mind and also like which berries. So you send in your Crocodile and then you Earthquake, but it has Shuka Berry. Yeah, I've seen Shuka Ice Beam as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. It also um, it also runs Assault Vest and Assault Vest Psychics have gotten really effective and useful. They can like future sight on whatever dark type you switch in and then force it out. Like you know that strategy from OU. Yep. Um, also check things like special Salamence that are really strong and good. So it's uh, it's very useful to have these AV Psychics. Uh, I'm trying to think what else they do. Yeah, they can like pivot into Caldeo and Primarina as well. So it can do a lot like defensively or as a as a possible sweeper. So there's a ton of reasons to use it. Yeah, it, it can also cheese. It can also cheese too. It can also cheese as well with the quick yeah. draw, quick claw as well, which is actually part of the reason why people are using it in OU. It's very funny because I believe, I feel like this happens with every Slowbro, right? When a Slowbro is not, or Slow King is not OU, uh, it's, you know, lower tier cousin will do the exact same thing it does, basically, yeah. in the lower tiers. Uh, I remember Gen 6 and 7, Slowbro running through all the tiers, and uh, basically, you know, being used in UU, being used in RU, being used in NU the exact same way. 
Uh, so it's funny to see this thing, and, and I mentioned it potentially even moving up because people are using the nasty plot quick draw, quick claw set because you got like a 44% chance or something like that to a 43 or 44% to uh, to move first, so it can be game deciding. It's really interesting to see Thunderous uh, move up as well. I remember uh, also RU when they banned uh, the bro, but it's it's cool to see Thunderous move up uh, as well. Um, I know back when it was RU, before it got RUBL, it was definitely threatening with the uh, just nasty plot sets and then, you know, psychic for coverage, focus blast, Thunderbolt, or you could even run Sludge Wave uh, if you don't care about hitting uh, Needle Queen uh, and things like that. So it's, um, or like just like certain grounds in general. So it's cool to see that mod. I come back up and I think that it's it's also a big thing about boots right boots has really uh, changed the way a Pokemon can play because a Pokemon like this that again if it, you're a bulkier team you want to limit its switch-ins with stealth rock and the appropriate pivots and maybe some status like scald burn or something it's not the same because thunderous can just come in as many times as it wants uh, and it looks like the dog also went up to you you want to talk a little bit about that I'm assuming it's just the same thing choice ban uh, thousand arrows because there's no way dragon dance is good with a light clay ban However, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Yeah, it's, it's just like choice ban plus a good speed tier on teams that um, that can wear down a Moongus and Tangrowth with stuff like Thunderous right before, actually. Zygarde's the one that I see at least of these three, but it's still like fairly useful. Like if you have a Moongus as your grass type that doesn't actually resist ground and you I run into CD, Zygarde 10, you can, you can do some work with Thousand Arrows, just clicking buttons. And if they go to like defensive Salamence as their other ground type answer, you have Outrage for it. Yeah. So make that retina just dies and opens up a big hole. I don't know. I mean, it's it has like very little defensive use. Uh, stats aren't very good defensively, but like if you get it in as a breaker, it can do some work. It's probably the least common of these three, as I said, but still a good mod. Pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's always good. Uh, I mean, it's just a fast Pokemon that can check good speed tiers, like the speed tier right in front of it, which is a big one that you mentioned. Um, just going uh, down a little bit more, uh, Rhyperior going up to UU, I think it's about time. I think Rhyperior yeah. has use in UU and OU as well. Uh, one of the biggest things about Rhyperior that I liked was its ability to check Salamence, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. a stealth rocker that can actually beat Defog Salamence. So I, I like that a lot about Rhyperior. Also, you could even SD plus stealth rock and break through Mungus, uh, break through Scizor at the time uh, as well. Uh, it's bulky enough to live like... Uh, a grass knot from an un, like a non uh, like like choice mod, for instance, uh, as well. Uh, if it's running Spadef, uh, but again, the big thing is that it's supposed to set up Stealth Rock in my opinion. I think that Choice Ben as well is also really good too. I fought that as well, uh, being able to you know to a KO Pokemon like uh, Tangrowth with uh, Megahorn, or also like if it's sort if also if it's sort I've one of the, uh, one side I really liked as well was Swords Dance Megahorn, so like Tangrowth came in and just died. Uh, it was also able to, uh, just being able to threaten, obviously the Electro types, the uh, the Flying types as well for the tier, uh, being, in my opinion, a, a super good rocker, especially like, if you see the UU top 10 right now, all these mods, uh, for the most part, they do not like, they don't like Rhyperior. I'm not saying Rhyperior likes them either, but like when Rotom Heat is common, when, you know, there's an Electro-type up here where there's Lycanroc Dusk and even Jirachi, right? Or even being able to shrug off hits from Crocodile and Salamence. Like, it's just a good mod. It's a good staple, and I think it's about time it moves up. Uh, what does that mean for Aryu, though, would you say? Um, I don't know. It's it's very weird because Rhyperior, uh, it's really, really good there. And it does a lot of useful things like checking Togekiss and yeah. Noivern and getting rocks up against them. As well as just having the same really good offensive presence it has in UU. Like if you run some attack on like a Stealth Rock Rhyperior, you're faster than Gastrodon naturally. So if they try to go to Gastrodon as their water type and they've taken like any chip, they realize they can't take two Earthquakes. Yeah, Earthquake two kill. That's a big thing about it. Same yeah. when they use like... Roserade is grass type. You just you just die to earthquake. It's very scary to switch into. So teams can worry about that a little less. Uh, I think Diancy is going to be good and rarely used as a new like rock type stealth rocker. But you have a lot less offensive power. Um, so that's but but arguably crazy. arguably better versus Tokus though because it if if Tokus runs like the rare Aura Sphere or something like that like. Diancy doesn't knot. care. Yeah, or Grass Knight as well. Yeah, so that's pretty cool as well. Um, I think the one next to it is the biggest thing for RU because that's their yeah, top dude. two Pokemon. That's that's arguably the best Pokemon in RU besides uh, Togekiss. And I, I'd still put Mianxiao up there too, even though, I, I mean, I know it has the uh, it has the, the usage, and usage does not mean 
you know, it, it doesn't actually mean if the Pokemon is the best in the tier or not. It just means people acknowledge it as really good on the ladder, so people are using it. Um, so it's really interesting to see Zerud go down because if we actually just look at the usage stats, uh, Zerud, my favorite set besides Scarf was the Heavy Duty Boots Pivot set with like jungle healing. Um, like your U turn, Darkest Lariat, Power Whip, Jungle Healing, and you know, that's your go to Sweet Coon answer, that's your go to Bulky Water answer, that's your who cares if they go to it, you turn out and bring out your 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 Raiko or or uh, or things like that, or, or Metagross or whatever you had. Uh, and it's just a good Zerkatry check and stuff like that. So Zerud being gone, and obviously you can run close combat in it as well, like four attacks of close combat for, and Banded was really decent too, in my opinion. But being able to bop something like Kabala out as well. So that's such a big change for the tier. And uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, Zarude's big impact on RU was basically just holding down a ton of Pokemon because yeah. they lose to Zarude, so they have to run some really weird shit to beat it or just accept that they lose to it. So mine's like, uh, like Celebi, Delmice, uh, most, uh, most like psychic types and water types like Suicune even um, they all get a big boost from not having Zarude on most teams to kind of kick their ass it's uh I don't know I mean Zarude's just a mon that you can kind of slap on every team if you want to and there's nothing wrong with it yeah, if you do you don't lose uh, anything from it. It. yeah so now that it isn't there I'm curious to see how things go like it's interesting because it checks electric types, but once it leaves, I don't think electric types get, get better. better. Yeah, I, I think it and actually. They really don't. Yeah, like they all had coverage for it already, and yeah. now people are going to run the grass types that they Can don't actually, have. That, yeah, exa for. exactly. See, that's the big thing that I want to note as well. Like you mentioned, Celebi, uh, which is uh, any Pokemon currently, but it's something that obviously you can use in higher tiers as well. Uh, I think Celebi is something that becomes way better. Like the besides uh, Mianxia being able to blow it back with U-turn and say through a Crobat. Like in general, it just it's a really good it's a strong Pokemon here and being able to check the electric types Raiko and Zerk Tree really well. Uh, so that's a that's a really interesting one too. Obviously there's always Toekis as well, but you can throw on your steel, you can throw on your Registeel, you can throw on your uh, uh, you mentioned Deancey as well, uh, which I think is yeah. a, a big one uh, too that I really, really think is underrated as well. I, I really wish we had Alan Mola because being able to wish past the Deancey would be so good. Uh, but yeah, so like this is uh this is such a big change for the tier because again Zerud was like a glue. Zerud was like, okay, I want to build a new team, so I have my Zerud slot right here. What am I using after? Because it just you didn't want to lose the Suiko, you didn't want to lose the bulky waters, and who cares if they scald burn you because you just clicked jungle healing and got back. Like it was just that type of mod. I really wish it got knockoff too, but I'm glad it didn't like hold it back from going up a tier, uh, which is pretty cool. And to see that mod in the UU tier is very interesting as well. Um, considering it doesn't match up the best versus the top 10. So that's really, really interesting to see. Uh, but I saw in tournaments people using, again, Heavy Duty Boots, uh, U-Turn Pivot Zerud, and just again, I just did a bulky water check, um, and uh, being able, and obviously like uh, a crook check as well and things like that. Uh, and then just being able to pivot around and bring out your breaker. So, I mean, it just does the exact same thing. So it's cool to see it uh, move up in your tier. Uh, this is an interesting, this is an interesting uh, move up right here. Poltergeist moved up to RU, whereas the best dark type in RU just went away. And uh, I don't know how much Pokemon like Pangoro are used in the RU tier, because I know they're NUBL. Uh, but it's interesting to see. Like, I can actually look through the... Uh, let me look at RU and just look at the dark type Pokemon. There's Incineroar, yeah. and that's about an obstacle. Okay, there's still Goon. But a Goon isn't like the best answer. Obviously, there's still Umbreon. Okay, good. I was talking about that last time. There's still Umbreon. So... Uh, it's interesting to see that it moved back up. Was Smash being... Was, was, wasn't there like an RU tour or something going on? Or um, uh, like a, a ladder tour? Was something like that going on? Or can you explain a little yeah, bit about this? Yeah, I mean, at some point... The, the RU ladder tour started like today, so that wouldn't influence it. But okay. I think in RUPL, which is a which is a team tour for RU... Yes. Someone came up with like a formula for screens hyper offense that included uh, Poltegeist with Strength Sap that like in theory let it beat Zarude because you just keep spamming Strength Sap and eventually Cursed Body activates and it can't use Darkest Lair yet. And then you like set up again or attack it and you like somehow beat Zarude 1v1. So that was like a very entertaining invention that just like smashed every team in RU Open and then eventually led to this like screens ban that we have now. So yeah. with the screens ban, I think Poltegeist is kind of weird. But yeah, I mean, people are definitely talking about it as like a possible broken. And uh, every psychic type and ghost type appreciates 
Zarud being gone because the Incineroar gets worn down a lot easier. You knock it and then yeah, it has to yeah, it's coming to rocks and yeah, and it can't heal off status like Zarud does. So, yeah, I mean, I think all this stuff is going to be pretty crazy. If you can get Poltergeist to set up, it's definitely going to be super, super scary. Um, I, I think it's going to be interesting, too, because, like, I feel like, uh, just to, to clarify what he said, again, when he said screen ban, it doesn't mean light screen reflector ban. It means that you can't use light clay, so uh, you have yeah, to last... Yeah, nerf is a better word. Yeah, it's, it's a huge nerf because you only have four turns to abuse, basically, because the certain you set it up, it's, it's done after that, right? you got to switch to your Pokemon. So, uh, Veil itself gets... Uh, worse, um, just because obviously you can't abuse it as much, uh, and I mean we'll talk about it as well because you can see the the drops on the other side. We're slowly but surely getting there, uh, but it, it's interesting to see that. Like I don't think Poltergeist would be a Pokemon that ends up staying. Are you personally? Um, I think that bulky offenses can for sure afford uh, checks, and I think that it's just like it's really tough to set up in my opinion, and like. Just looking through the tier, I don't even need a dedicated dark type. Like I could shadow sneak it with the blade, or even first impression a weakened one with uh, Galisopod. So it's interesting. And then there's Mimikyu as well, which is like in my opinion a staple on offenses in the RU tier, uh, especially now that Zeruda Faster Mon is gone. So Mimikyu actually has a yeah. decent speed tier, like a really, really, really decent speed tier. Uh, so yeah, that Mon's gonna be super cool. I forgot about that. Yeah. So I don't think I don't think the Poltergeist is. Gonna, I mean, I, I love Poltergeist. I think it's one of the really cool Pokemon. I think if it had Scald, it might even push it over the edge more than Giga Drain. Uh, personally, because imagine burning Dark types as they come in. Besides Obstagoon, like it'd be, you know, the foul play wouldn't be doing as much or whatever Dark type move. But the big one, Nu has lost its baby. It has lost Flygon. Now, if we look at the Nu tier stats right now, I was talking with um, I was talking with Expulsa right before we started recording. But you see the first seven Pokemon. In NU, this is basically your go-to. You're gonna see one of these Pokemon on every team, no matter what. That's Flygon, Bronzong, Rotom Cut, Sylveon, Talonflame, Vaporeon, and Copperaja. Those are NU staples. But Flygon specifically, defensive Flygon, probably one of the best Copperaja switches in the tier. Besides Talonflame, of course, but doesn't have to worry about random rock sliding. Nobody's running choice band play rough. Relax. Uh, but great defogger, good pivot, earthquake, can be a choice scarf, choice band, can dragon dance. This was the NU glue. And I played NU a lot. You guys saw me get number one with, uh, with Rabio. You saw us just playing high ladder a lot. Uh, we've played NU a ton uh, this past few months. And we're actually getting back to it soon as well. But um, this is huge because this is the best defensive ground type in the tier. Obviously, you see uh, Mudsdale right down there at number nine. But I, I don't like Mudsdale just because of the lack of recovery. And granted, Wish Report, I could bring it up. But I just don't like I think I think that Flygon is a lot more... has so much utility because you turn specifically. just gives you so much out of the tier and to see that the best pokemon from nu rises up to ru is so interesting to me uh because it makes pokemon for example like rotom cut better and rotom cut was already a top three used mon and the reason it makes rotom cut better is because uh, this is a ground type that's um takes neutral from leaf storm so great and it's faster than rotom cut so you get super effective u-turns off uh, so the fact that like the ground types now are going to be taking super effective damage from Leaf Storm and stuff like that too. Nasty Plot Rotom Cut just sounds way better. Specs sounds better uh, as well. Uh, and uh, do you want to talk about what it didn't RU or why it moved up? Uh, sure. Yeah. So the electric types in RU are really good. Uh, Zerka Tree and Raikou are two of the top mons. I don't know if they're top by usage. Okay. Yeah. Zerka Tree is fourth and Raikou eighth. Yeah. So people are recognizing that. The electrics are really good, and Flygon checks them pretty well because it's naturally faster than Zerka Tree, so you have to Dazzling Gleam it on the switch uh, if you try to go hard Flygon to catch it. And even if, like, you don't catch it on that switch, Flygon's still, like, a mon that can revenge kill it. Yeah. I think Dragon Dance sets are also pretty cool. I've used them on some random, like, balance teams with spikes. If you wear down Gastrodon or Milotic over the course of the game, you can end up like sweeping um, because it's faster than Scarf Circuitry, which is a common revenge killer. And you can live a hit from like Scarf Zerud and Mian Shao because you're pretty bulky. You do a lot of cool stuff. I've seen Choice Bands too because it's stab attacks hit like everything except Togekiss, and then you can lure Togekiss with Stone Edge. Um, it just does a lot of cool things. So I've always thought it's like an interesting mod to use in RU. But it's it's unfortunate for any of that it went up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the, over team building because you had it on like every team. Because it wasn't even it wasn't even restricting, right? It, that's it, it's think about it like the Landorus T of the the tier. It's not restricting. Yeah. It just provides so much support for literally everything 
really need offensive or defensive. And then when you look at NU now, like so many mods are going to get better. I think Arcanine gets better. That's I think that's one big one that gets better as well because again, uh, being able to resist the uh, the fire type attacks that come out of it. Obviously, Vaporeon's still there, um, but yeah, Pokemon like Arcanine get better. Drapion gets better as well. Uh, in general, like this is going to be such an interesting thing. Uh, a big one as well that gets better, and I think this is we will probably see a lot more uses from this Pokemon too. Is Salazzle. Uh, I think Salazzle yeah. was already great, but now like the only way I can knock out Flygon was if it was plus two Dragon Pulse. Um, but now just a simple heavy duty boots, uh, you know, Sludge Wave, Toxic, Nasty Plot, Flamethrower, Fire Blast set can work, or obviously the Sub Toxic set as well. Uh, but I think the Nasty Plot sets get a whole lot better because if you see if you see top ten, like they don't like Nasty Plot period, right? So DNC is a good check, Vaporeon's a good check, but that's a, they're checks at best. Like they don't want to come in on the attacks, plus they get poisoned as well. So there's a lot of uh, interesting things to see. I'm, I'm I'm very excited to see how the tier changes and. Oh my god, my voice is like going all over the place. My bad. Uh, but uh, I'm excited to see um, how the tier changes as well. Heliolisk moving up to NU, I think, came at the perfect time as well, in my opinion. Because um, one thing about Flygon is that obviously it wasn't take, it didn't care about Volt Switch. Obviously, Thunderbolt Surf, it was eating them up. And you got the Hyper Voice on it. But like Grass Knot plus Surf now hit all the ground types super effectively. So. It's crazy to see that Helios is there, especially in a time where like rain um, as well has just moved up. So, uh, flag on for RU. Congratulations to RU for taking the best Pokemon from our tier. Uh, so we have ZU to RU, Politoed. Uh, again, if you want to just talk about it as well, I mean, it's pretty obvious why. Yeah, I mean, in one word, rain. Yeah. Like, it's actually pretty good in RU. It saw some usage in like tournament games too, as well as being something pretty easy to spam on ladder. I'm sure Rain appreciates Zerud being gone. Yes. Um, yeah, you can run like Bear Scuda with Crunch, hits most of those new grass types like uh, Celebi and Delmice. Rain's just, it's always good. I mean, there's also just like Kingdra knocking all these grass types out with Hurricane, Draco Meteor. Zer like, Zerud being gone cool is so thing. big, dude. It's so big. Yeah, it changes like every mon there it's it's crazy how all these tier shifts basically create completely new tiers by removing the best mon from the UU, tier, yeah. RU, yeah. and NU. I'm, I'm interested to see how it happens yeah, yeah. I, I agree good rose rain's good yeah and period, period that's just basically it. it's good so it's and uh, for those that didn't know uh drizzle was banned was banned in lower tiers so uh as well as hail as well which is why you see some of these pokemon going on. drizzle is banned in lower tiers right there's no way they'd let Dr i'm pretty sure they banned also heat rock plus like sun as well so or they they ban heat rock or something like that too but maybe i'm thinking about the different tiers uh there's a few more that rose up from pu to nu now i'm not sure how much of an influence it had on pu tier so you'd obviously have to go that but in terms of nu uh guzzlord uh is a great pokemon in the tier uh just being able to knock off bronzong and things like that but also threaten sylveon with heavy slam so that's a great it has good defensive um utility because dragon and dark are really solid uh together and uh, obviously uh, being four times big to fairy is a big thing but again you just EV it to be slightly faster than Sylveon and then you heavy slam and you two it KO them even if they're defensive uh, just having that defensive utility being able to get up spikes as well or not this mod but like you get up spikes and then dragon tails your Pokemon out I just think a, a dragon type that can threaten Bronzong is always good uh, so just a dragon type that can threaten steals really well Healer this moved up too uh, to the tier and uh, another uh, great fast pokemon can spam glare uh, hyper voice well just the good thing the thing about healer this is that if you look at the nu tier nu is uh relatively slow outside of a few pokemon like ignore Aer oh, i don't want to say ignore aerodactyl but you will see aerodactyl leads maybe i don't see dragon dance as much but you know there's arrow and then you go down and you go down and then you have like ninja and teleon and teleon is checked by healer water is checked by healer vaporeon one of the best mods in the tier checked by healer especially if it's wish protect scald heal bell Right, like you can't even touch Heliosk at all. So, and then you have like Salazzle and then Starmie, which is checked unless it's like offensive size shock and then Talonflame. So, the tier is, uh, and Tauros, uh, but the tier is relatively slow for the most part. And then they have just mons that are just slightly faster, and those mons don't like coming in on Heliosk either way. Uh, so that's a great addition to the tier. It's cool to see Toxic going back, man. I remember we wanted to get that mon banned when we were playing. Yeah, it's, it's very cool. Um, it's less insanely fast than it yes. was in the one meta yeah. where it like kicked ass because even though there's no fly gun anymore there's still a lot of faster mons like yeah. a salazzle talon flame um who else is 
like Starmie. Yep. Uh, so it's less of a dominating speed tier, so things can revenge it. But it's really cool. One thing that's entertaining about like the new mons and never used is that Flygon left as a ground type, but then we got Quagsire to take its place yes. and check a, lot, a good amount of the things that would otherwise take advantage of no Flygon. Like Sword Stance Toxicroak seems like it would love Flygon being gone, but then Quagsire hard walls it. So it's sort of stuck with that. Toxicroak can run nasty plot sets though too. Yeah. If you hit your blasts, that's like a Those insane. are broken. Yeah, those are actually broken uh, back in the day. I remember, I remember us. I I'm glad it was gone at points when we played. Uh, and Zatu. Zatu coming yeah. back to NU. That's, uh, I mean, uh, it's not like Zatu couldn't be used at NU, and I fought a lot of Zatu. It's just a good, it beats Bronzong. Like, it beats those mods. Uh, 1v1, yeah. it provides support and teleports. So, I mean, it's, there's not a lot to talk about Zatu. It just, it bounces back your hazards and doesn't care about your passive mods. Now, that's not to say that some of these rockers can't beat it 1v1. Like, well, it depends, because uh, defensive Deancey actually doesn't beat Zatu one v one because uh, it just takes the Diamond Storm, takes about like sixty something percent, and then roost it off, and then Moonblast doesn't do that much uh, to Zatu. So they, it's, it's it depends on the roles for that, that, but it could be Mudsdale and obviously beating Bronze. Just providing the support without having to give you, you know, without having to have that defog slot on Flagon, for instance, or anything. I like Zatu plus Talonflame a lot. I like Zatu plus Rotom Cut a lot. I like Zatu plus Sylveon or Vaporeon because it just provides the rich support. But that's cool. Obviously, PU losing a, a Magic Bouncer is really interesting. I'm sure these mods, like, uh, were they stables in PU? I have to look at the, the PU uh, tier. I think they were all, like, A or A plus rank. But none of them had the same, like, use on every team quality that um, Scizor or Flygon had in their respective tiers. Mm -hmm. Like, they were all really good, and you could put them on if you want a really good breaker. But it's not like you ever had to use them or anything. Well, I mean, if we even look at PU right now, they're nowhere in here. <laughs> I know, the top that's um, Interesting. Let me look at the vibe. Yeah, they all had, like, natural checks that were pretty common, and they were all pretty balanced. So, uh... Surprise. I mean, they're, they're good, but I don't think it changes the tier that much to not have them. Uh, all I know is like Stealth Rock Sandaconda gets them up better now that Zatsu is gone. Yeah. But then most of the other Stealth Rockers are like Regirock and Gigalith and Agron, so they already kind of kicked Zatu's ass. So it was very weird um, how they're, these mods are probably like as good in NU as they were in PU. I know that like Guzzlord as well, like struggle to stay healthy in the PU tier. Uh, because the wishers are pretty bad like aromatis is not a good wisher for a pokemon with like 10,000 hp so uh, it's interesting to see that uh, at least go uh, back up uh, another mon that uh, we stole from zu was garbador uh, garbador was good in every tier it always is good it just clicks by and every lower tier because all it does is just click spikes pain splits and it's basically you know it's your t-spike absorber it's your spiker that's good even in a heavy duty boots meta game it doesn't matter and um it's just a great one and being able to defensively check fairies and come in on Sylveon, and even check Talonflame, check Rotom Cut to an extent, uh, to an extent. Uh, just good, the all around spiker so it's good to see that in NU, uh, sorry to ZU. And from ZU to PU, uh, we have Fl um, Frostlass, Sandslash, and that is a Silvali and I don't know what type that is. I think it's Ghost, looks is, like Ghost. Is that Ghost? Looks almost fairyish, but it could be ghost. Let me look at the. I don't think fairy was ever down there, so, so I can go. Uh, that probably is ghost. Frostlust, Frostlust is always a cool mon, though. Um, it just gets up spikes. You can use it as like a suicide lead on hyper offense, or like just click buttons with poltergeist and whatever ice stab you want to run. I used it in NU for a while. It's in like an old meta. It's probably pretty cool here. Uh, sand slash might just be on like hail on not hail teams. Wrong sand slash. Yeah, wrong. Sand teams, which are like sort of valuable. I'm not really sure why this thing rose, honestly. But okay. I mean, I know frost and, slash just has a good speed tier period, like you mentioned. Like it's it's freaking good. Like offensively, Poltergeist is just really strong. Uh, though Scrafty is one of the most used Pokemon in the uh, in the PE tier, so that's like a hard check to it all around. So it's interesting. Uh, what were you saying about Savali? It, uh, let's see. It's I'm just double checking the yeah. It's Savali Ghost, okay, which cool. is a, is a mod I've loved using in like every tier it has been in. Yes. Like just clicking a 120 base power ghost attack. Are broken. With <laughs> good base attack and good stats. Yeah. You do like, I think you do like 
some crazy amount to Scrafty that makes it not actually that good of a check. And you also don't take that much from knockoff. Like if yeah. it's bulk up Scrafty versus So Valley Ghost, and it comes in on you as you Swords Dance, I think you just just win because your multi attack does like 45% and their knockoff does like 40 or 45%. So you just kind of beat the resist, which is very entertaining. And it's just bulky all around. Yeah, those base 95s all around. Just need a little bit more to make it honestly a better Pokemon. But yeah, go so Valley Ghost, big fan. We used it a lot in NU back in the day too. We used also Valley back in the day. They were so good. Steel as well. But uh, that's basically for the drops. I mean, for the rises. So now let's get to the drops. This is where the stuff gets juicy. The King has fallen, ladies and gentlemen. Needle King has fallen from OU to uh, UU. And uh, this is pretty interesting for the UU tier because this is the first time UU has never had a Latias. And Latias is probably the best, uh, you know, bulky, offensive. And, you know, borderline defensive Pokemon that can come in on Needle King, shrug off every hit, even take an Ice Beam, and then just recover it off, right? Uh, Yu doesn't have that sort of check itself besides uh, Chansey, uh, which is obviously a really good... Uh, it's arguably a better check to Needle King than Blissey, uh, because uh, Blissey can get bopped by, like, Super Power or Focus Punch, whereas Chansey has, like, the defensive Swamper, so it doesn't care about that. Obviously, though, the... Uh, the give up, the trade off is that Blissey runs heavy to the boots, chance he has to run a Violite. So that's pretty big uh, for uh, UU to get a Needle King. I think it's just a great offensive threat. If you look at the um, the top 10 in the UU tier, uh, while it doesn't always want to switch into a lot of these Pokemon, I mean, Mew is gone, right? Mew is gone, uh, Scizor is gone, so there's an offensive check gone. Uh, Lycanroc Dust doesn't knock it out unless it's wearing Psychic Fangs or something like that. So, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't take hits very well. But it's, if it gets in, it just clicks buttons. So I think that's really cool when you see, you know, Pokemon like Tangrowth and Amoongus being ran. And then you also see, like, look at look at the mods that just all came to the UU tier. Like, all these, they fear switching into Yee, uh, to Needle King. And again, Needle King is a type of Pokemon you're not going to switch into. It's not going to switch into any moves either, right? You're going to give this mod on a free pivot from U-Turn, a.k.a. Zarude, scaring out the water type and bringing in something that uh, can deal with that. Like, maybe it's like a defensive Como or something. So Needle King comes in and just Ice Beam. So I think that's a big thing in terms of why it fell down from the OU tier. I don't know. I feel like I feel like Needle King has always been good, but with the the with teleport Blissey being incredible, uh, basically it and Lander is starting to run more speed. Even defensive Lander is starting to run more speed than Needle King, and just its inability to come in and the the rise of uh, Slow King as well as one of the best special answers and even Tornadoes being able to eat off a hit and knock off and then Volcarona having that defensive utility and even Weavile rising up. Like Needle King is still a good Pokemon in the OU tier but just doesn't have what it had in prior shifts. Uh, so that's not to say that it's not going to be good but I think in the current, like current, current right now it's always a great wall breaker but I wouldn't use it per uh, personally right now because if you're fighting offense, for instance, Needle King's too slow. It's not going to get things off. And if you're fighting stall, unless you're running Focus Punch or Super Power, you're not going to be able to break it as well. And that's what the ladder is right now with OLT. Um, do you have anything to note? Um, I don't know. For the overused part, it just seems like there's offensive mods with like higher speed or more um, or more defensive utility. Like you can use Weavile to take Shadow Balls from Dragapult. Yep. Or you can use like Garchomp, which is faster. Though I still think Needle King's like extremely scary. Oh, it's good. It's, like, it's good. I've been super owned by it before because the dude like paralyzed my Tornadus, and then I was stuck with like only one Mon faster than Needle King, and it just kind of clicked moves and KO'd everybody. It can be good versus like unprepared teams, but I don't know. I guess people prefer like different offensive mods. In Yu Yu, it seems uh, it seems really really cool. The timing is great for it because Mew. Mew was like a defensive mon that outspeeds it and so it can recover up on it. Yep. And that was what people often use for Needle Queen. So now Mew is gone and it can click buttons even more freely. So it seems very, uh, very threatening. Let's AV Reuniclus. Like I mentioned AV Psychics earlier. This is another thing where they're going to be desperately used to hold it off. They can then, obviously. You can run Megahorn. You can run Megahorn Berserk. too. So like there's options. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be hella funny. I'm sure someone's going to get like lured by that in a big game if they don't ban it i don't know if it's going to be ban worthy honestly it seems I, really really scary but there's a ton of super strong breakers there like caldeo pre marina that oh I've for also sure i don't i don't think it'll be banned i think it's gonna be really good and uh, scary to fight offensively i just don't think it'll be banned for sure i don't think it's i don't, I, I think it was the king for a bit but i don't think it's the king right now when it comes to you uh, however rain going down is 
the best rain center as well is really interesting did uh so i know that um i know that rain's allowed in ru uh and have they i know there's also been discussion about tiering separately now uh as well i don't know if you've kept up with that but i know they're like talking about tiering separately the tiers instead of like oh if you you does this everything below has to follow type of thing uh, but what are your thoughts on i guess pelipper and, and potentially rain in the u tier i'm honestly i'm not sure how much of a difference it makes it's definitely a thing you have to account for just because Pelipper brings a lot more offensive presence to it. Like, right away, you can't really rely on solely your grass types to handle yeah. rain. Yeah. Pelipper just, like, clicks Hurricane into them, and your your resist to the sweepers is going down. But, like, I'm not sure. I think there are there's a decent amount of pools. Like, uh, let's see. Like, Pre-Marina is just a really good defensive mon in general uh, that eats up even like specs Pelipper hurricanes i think yeah yeah sponges like that a av reuniclus i mentioned earlier can probably do like an okay job and then if you have those you can keep the grass types which are really common yeah like growth and amoongus are everywhere and if you can keep those healthy enough to take on barascuda and what other other rain sweepers people go with like i don't know if anyone uses like aqua jet crawdon on rain but yeah if you can if you can fit enough rain checks you'll be good but I think people just aren't going to be able to get away with only their only their grass type to handle rain. I think you, because, uh, well, yeah, probably, for yeah. sure, for sure. I think you hinted at something there too, because obviously, you know, when you think of Pelipper and OU, uh, you think of either the defensive one, or you think of Specs, and I was leaning more towards Choice Lock ones too, because I think Pelipper, Weatherball, and Hurricane are just really, really good, and it has just enough of a speed tier and enough defensive utility. Period. That uh, like even like a random uh, Scarf Pelipper sounds really cool with like ice beam and hurricane weather ball type thing and just checking offensive threats like you know rotom is there i just get weather balled and die so i'm excited to see how choice locked pelipper does but obviously you know rain is rain you put on your damp rock and yep. you throw on your great pokemon and that's it speaking of uh, a pokemon that could be on rain but probably won't be regieleki is back in uu now when regieleki was uu i didn't think it was broken at all i think regieleki is actually better in ou than it is in uu uh, uu just has too much like period right in OU when you think of your ground types you have Lanners, you have Garchomp you have Hippowdon and I think that why is there no Gliscor oh, come back buddy come back and be broken uh, you have extra Joe as well so those are your ground types when it comes and Swapper uh, which I'm surprised didn't fall down so congratulations Swapper for sticking around in the OU tier uh, so those mons are either get worn down or uh, there's, a, there's a set that's been running around that I use in the video as well uh, it was Screech Explosion uh, Normal Gem, and uh, it bops Defensive Landorus and uh, things like that. It opens up for other Pokemon too, but I think that's way harder in a UU tier where you have Rhyperior, right? Rhyperior, yeah. uh, you have a Pokemon like Rhyperior. You have Defensive Grass types that are also offensive, like Zarude, for instance, as well. Even Zydog is down in the tier too. So, and then you have even like outside of them, right? You have Thunderous T with its ability of Como, which naturally resists as well. That, that's gonna take a lot, but it still naturally resists. So I think that this is actually worse for Regieleki and I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, and also they took away one of its best things. Can't run light clay plus dual screens. So I can still run dual screens, but it doesn't have the light clay. So that, there goes your offensive, you know, option right there. So, I actually think that Regilek is going to fall down to RU and either stay RU or be RUBL at a point. And that's uh, that's my thought process when it comes to Regilek. I don't know if you have anything different or think anything different. Yeah, I don't know if it's actually going to fall because people might just spam the, the screens, rapid spin, explosion stuff from OU and keep trying to fit it on hyper offenses as a lead. Even with four, with four or three turns of reflect and stuff, I feel like that's so bad. It probably is not very good. I'm sure it's going to be tried, but yeah, I think it definitely could deserve a fall. Maybe I saw someone post about like a sub toxic thing on it. I don't actually know if it gets toxic, but let me double check. No, it does not get toxic. It's a, it's an, it's a Gen 8 Pokemon. None of them get toxic. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Shoot. I actually saw that in a post somewhere. I'm going to have to, going to have to give a reply to that, I guess. You're but wrong. <laughs> I don't even know what it can, I don't even know what it can do to the answers, right? Because it, it seems like. I, when we're talking about rarely used in my head, I'm thinking like, okay, wait, this thing has like 
insane speed and like the electric boosting ability like could it do something like what zero aura does in ou where you can't really hit landerous but then you wear it down and are no. still threat no like, see, I, the difference you know. is that you can hit lander knockoff is doesn't matter if you do any damage that's a hit regardless right yeah. thing. this thing has swift and round so um, it, it, yeah. there's no I, I even play i played the metagame where it was amungus and mammoth so i were like the best pokemon too and i still struggle when those were the only two switches like in the tier with reggie lucky so i do not think reggie lucky is going to stay you i don't think it's going to be a good pokemon you i could be wrong uh, and if anybody tries to use dual screens plus explosion just remember keep in mind you set up your reflect all right and then you set up your light screen you now have three turns of reflect left as you explode two turns of reflect and then what do you do you just that's it you're just trying to win immediately and then you play a rest of a, a bulky offense from there like it doesn't it doesn't do anything hey i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure if you get like one free turn with fucking gyarados that can be enough that mod's crazy broken anytime it's Anytime it gets going, but I still don't think it'll be good. And Reggie Lucky, like, shoot, what was I, what was I just thinking about? Uh, I don't know. I had shoot, I just completely forgot. But yeah, I mean, whatever I was gonna say, it was gonna be something about how this month sucks. Maybe they'll run uh, choice band explosion and plus like thunderous and just try and do something from their extreme speeds. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think it's gonna be yeah. that good. But I, I, I could be wrong. I, I, I've been wrong, wrong before. The one like goofy thing I was thinking with it is like someone's gonna use trick ring target. Oh yeah, ob get, obviously, like, obviously, like that's the only way it can work. <laughs> that's that is the only way it can work. But the problem yeah, is there's too many, <laughs> there's too many tier Pokemon in this tier that could take hits from it. But of course, know, yeah, you have the grasses too and the ground types, and then like priority in case you somehow do like trick two ring targets on. Yeah. Or yeah, it's not gonna be good. That's very true. We'll see. We'll see what happens because Trick Ring Target always finds a way. I mean, we use it in OU a lot as well. Uh, UU to RU, this is a big one because uh, Hail is allowed in the tier. Obviously, like I said, Light Clear is gone, but one Pokemon that's really good with this in RU is Arctazolt. And I believe my friends IFO and Outbreak uh, got to number two or one on the ladder with Arctazolt Hail. And uh, the set they had was, uh, you know, standard uh, Crash, Bolt Beak, Hydro Pump for Steelix. And uh, freeze dry for everything like a uh, Pokemon like Lantern or Manta and plus Lantern or whatever. I don't know. Uh, just some combination of them. Obviously, Bolt Beak, but you know, basically hitting your, your Gastrodons too and everything uh, as well. So that's, I think that's really cool. Uh, Hail obviously has a good offensive one. And I think the difference between this and Light Screen Reflect is that getting it in one turn and being able to switch gives you more turns to abuse it, right? So I was using, uh, from their team specifically, I was using this plus Dragon Dance Necrozma. And Necrozma is just insane because Dragon Dance Photon Geyser uh, knockoff and Earthquake is really crazy in RU, especially with the fact that, hey, Zerud is gone. So Zerud being gone is big because um, not only does Necrozma have Prism Armor plus the Veil, uh, so even Incineroar might get off an Intimidate, but Knockoff is doing crap. And if I run Weakness Policy, who the hell cares, right? I just drag that. I think I think this is a big, big, big thing for offense. And I think that losing uh, mods like Zerud and stuff, and uh, even Rhyperior even too, because like that's an annoying mod to break for even boosted Pokemon sometimes, uh, is really big. So this is a big thing for the RU tier. And uh, I don't know if they're going to end up banning Hail plus it, but because you could run... Uh, I mean, Arctosol, I think Arctosol is really good, but I don't think it's as great as it could be, personally. I just think the Veil aspect, even without, you know, your, your seven turns. And I always say that the turn after, because when you set it up, you know, you don't you have to switch. So, uh, you still, you get so much out of it. Uh, do you have any other thoughts on that? People have been talking some about using, uh, using Dark Pulse, Nasty Plot on it, which seems like pretty entertaining, but I don't know if it's good. Um, the theory is that it lets you like hit Metagross and like AV Reuniclus, which is apparently a thing in like every tier. Never mind, that, that hits harder with Blizzard. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, 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 you can hit like Metagross and Dewblade, I guess, but that already takes a lot from Blizzard. It's like a, it's like a niche thing that can let you like wall break in some situations. I don't think it's going to be that good on its own. I think the Hail partners with it are super cool. Um, I was talking to someone about it. He was trying to build Hail, and he's and I was like, "What does this have for like Scarf Me and Shell, which is way faster than like either Arcto form and can sweep a lot of Hail teams because you like stack Fighting Weeks." And he was like, "Shoot, I don't know." And then I and then I thought about it. I was like, "Oh shit! What if you add like, what if you add we talked about earlier Poltergeist, and it just sets up on that yeah on the, close uh, combat. combat, and then you just like sweep everything." Or you could do that with like DD Necrozma, you mentioned. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, that's, that's really cool. 
There's gonna be a lot of really cool ways to make hail work. Like rain is pretty good in RU. I think hail could be like that level or even like better it could be. So on the team we use right here, I, 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 I'll actually just show it off. We're using heavy to do boots offensive or they, and I said we because they gave it to me. So I ended up being part of them. Um, and then we have obviously the Dragon Nest of Krasma. There was a Raiko here, which provided some stability and stuff like that. And then just a four attacks, Mian Shao, Scarf Ligon. Uh, which was actually pretty good in clutch in certain situations. Uh, being able to eat a close comet from Scarf Mianxiao was a big thing, like you mentioned. And like I said, the uh, the mix Arc Dissolve, which is apparently what they swept with. I kept sweeping with Necrozma. Like, this mod was really broken under screens. I just Because AV really quick, I, just, I popped it, you know? Silex would come in and get knocked off an Earthquake, but then its body press doesn't do anything under Veil, period. And I was able to 1v1 that as well. So I think it's interesting yeah. to see. No. Now Necrozma doesn't even need stupid ass X Scizor, which yep. only hits the root, but yeah, does beat yeah. So you can run like the earthquake you had for Incineroar and Steels. Exactly. It is scary. Ooh, UU to PU. Guys, Quagsire is now freed in every tier from PU and up. You're welcome. That's it. That you can use this everywhere. There's not a lot to say about this mod. It will check every physical Pokemon, not grass types, or would freeze dry. And uh, I mean, you mentioned it before about Toxic Group being scary and end you, but here you go, Quagsire. You've been you've been released. You've been unleashed on the tier, once again. Yeah, it owns like it owns like and you uh, Drapion gets completely shut down by it. PU like the Sil Valley forms, which are super cool win cons. They're like they've been fire when we played and you yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. Mike, and we were like built for that. Now Quagsire shuts them down. Uh, I don't know. And are you if there's like that many specific targets? I'm sure I'm sure something will come up. Uh Quagsire is always useful. Great physical wall, nothing more to say. Yeah, that's basically it. It's gonna be there, it's gonna be a physical wall, and you can use it everywhere. Uh we mentioned any to PU, um or we mentioned Arch is all uh, so Hail is banned <coughs> in the lower tiers. Oh Slush Rush is banned, right? Um or is it just hail? I, did, no, it's, I think it's snow warning that's banned. So you can like manually set hail. Okay. But <laughs> really is the isn't the is the rock band too or no? Is it just snow warning? Uh I for, I forget. I think the rock is too. Okay, if the, if the rock is banned, please do not manually set up hail. <laughs> like that's only good on like on on uh on Dynamax moves, which we can't even <laughs> yeah. do here. But uh Arch Zolt going down there. Um, again, I mentioned it in RU, so it can be picked up. It's a freebie for the higher tiers uh, as well. Um, I think that this one is interesting. The, uh, the the bird. The bird sounds really crazy. Cause it's... Yeah, he's, he's super dangerous. Hurricane, off of like that 125 special attack, hits so hard. Yeah, it's like crazy. having competitive a... as well is big. Like Yeah. Like if you, if you defog and they go to this it's bulky enough to to not like if they predict that you're going to go to it and they click like flamethrow with charizard or whatever you don't just instantly die because yeah. you're pretty bulky and you have recover have, have you seen uh, so have you seen pu by the way it really looks a lot like our old nu like look, yeah, at, these, look at these guys right here uh but i mean i know one of the best pokemon of the tier is archaeops uh so that's a great check <laughs> um and obviously there's a defensive utility in gigalith and things like that too an aggro as well resist every attack as well but like even like a random like scarf set can bop archaeops and things like that it's interesting it's interesting i do think that yeah. the uh the the combine sets are gonna be the most threatening uh is there, is there any way that they can abuse a seed down here i'm trying to think i don't think there's any uh, it seems like a pink curtain might be there um or i, I know the wacky is but whether that's good is a, another discussion. It almost surely isn't. But I mean, like a really defensive one, like m damn near max defense with a plus one seed, combine and competitive and stuff like that. Like unless you have toxic, it's gonna be taking hits, right? So this would be yeah. interesting. I mean, in theory, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, plus being able to block default. Easier, it's definitely easier to use, and I've seen the most of so far. But perhaps like less of like an instant win condition, like those CM stuff is. Uh, future sight is really really oh, cool you, on it. Yeah, future sight with U-turn. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you get up to that like 125 special attack future sight, and then you go out to your like Passimian or Scrap or Singapanda yeah. or Ground type, um, and it's just it's just a, a deadly combo. Like every time you get Articuno in and you click that, it does a lot of damage. Like I wasn't expecting. Like you're used to Slowking's future sight and stuff, and no. that's like on a 
Yeah, but all you know, feds are one, yeah. It's way different. Like, I had someone, uh, in a test I got up a future site, somebody, like, went to Lantern, and the Lantern took, like, 50% or something. And that was, like, max special defense Lantern, too. I was like, holy, holy shit, this is, this is the so strong cool. Mod, yeah. It's really super cool. It might be ban-worthy, so. We'll, the future we'll site, that's that interesting. Is. Interesting too, because let's look at the tier and see what dark types they have. They have Absol, which doesn't come in on Hurricane. Scrafty, which and Scrafty, which doesn't come in on Hurricane. Doesn't. Bro, I'd be crazy. Yo, you they you lead uh you lead your your Articudo, they lead Scrafty. You get the competitive boost, and you just click Future Sight Turn One because they're definitely gonna switch and then just pivot out. That's awesome. Yeah, that's uh that's scary. Yeah. Maybe maybe it will be. Huh? I was in thinking about that. It's yeah. Funny because in NU it was just it was a meme that like. Everybody would use Articuno Galar and it would never be like very good because everyone has such good steel types there. Now it's in PU and the steel types kind of suck. So very, very fortunate. Hey, well, let's see how it goes. Props up to you. And then you have the rest of the Hale brothers right here. Look at them all just uh, falling down. Although the Sand Slash was really good at NU at that one metagame that I played just because of the fact that it provided a, a spiker that and a rapid spinner that could beat Ninjask, which is very big. If you actually look at below PU with the NU tier, it doesn't look terrible. Has but then there's like center scores, like some random demons down here too. So it's interesting to see that. And if you look at the ZU top list, like so volley ground, center scorch, sock. It has defensive utility, which is cool for Oxy and knockoff and stuff like that as well. And also for Articuno, which is number seven. That's really interesting. I guess it could be a cool little spiker down here in the tier. Uh, maybe a sub Artivish could be cool. Hey, just sub, vicious ren, freeze dry type of thing, crash. I'm not sure, but uh, overall, obviously, them losing the ability to uh, hail up and potentially sweep is really, really big for the mods. Yeah. Also, ZU somehow has Jellicent, so that kind of that kind of owns. Yeah, like what the hell are you doing down there, buddy? You're not even really. Talking. I know. Oh man, tier really good. Good. Really good and like rarely used now because there's no more Zarude. It's actually a mana should try there at some point. Okay, go ahead and try. Let's see how, let's see how you deal with the Zerkatry and the rise of other grass types. Let's see what happens. Yeah, very true. It won't be that good. But. <laughs> hey, it might be though. Who knows? I'm not gonna knock it. Uh, but I think overall that's uh, that's all we had to say, right? Yeah, I mean that's that's all. We covered a lot. Dang. Uh, it should be really fun to try these out. I wonder. I wonder how it's gonna go. What stuff like becomes ban worthy, or if it's just like sort of minor shifts up and down, and how good things are. Because you don't get that many new toys in each tier. It's only like one or two new mods, but you just you lose the staples. Yeah, lose now that they aren't shut down by like a like an S rank, like Zarude or Sizor or Flygon. So it'll be really cool. Yeah. So uh, guys, thank you very much for watching. Explosive, thank you so much for being here on the video. Uh, it was great. We talked about yeah. some good stuff, guys. Let me know your thoughts as well down below. I'll leave a like. And I think that's it. I got nothing else to say. So, later, guys. Good video. Good video, everybody. I forgot to click X on it. So, good video. That's what we do. We cheer each other up after the video. We say, nice job. Later, guys.